Welcome golf fans, pursuers of knowledge in the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you my before the lock show for the WGC FedEx St. Jude Invitational. Hey, thank you all for stopping by. If you are new, glad you stopped by to check me out. Hit that subscribe button and you are going to want to do that because as I mentioned, I've got a pretty little hefty giveaway I'm going to be doing here at the end of the FedEx playoffs. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But first off, everything that we are going to cover in this show, I am going to go through my top value plays for the 6,000 range. I'm going to go into uh, ownership projections. I'm going to go into weather. And we're going to cover all that in about 15 minutes. So let's do this. Okay, so I've been talking about this giveaway. It's taken me a little bit of a while to kind of get my mind around it, what I wanted to do. And uh, this is what I'm going to do. So this is come to FedEx playoffs. It's actually going to be my one-year anniversary of doing the show Whatever you do, please don't go check out the show uh, for my early ones. Uh, they were a little different, a little rough. As you see, I've gotten better and better. And uh, I think the first show I ever did was for the Northern Trust. And really, I started it um, because there was kind of a lack of information that was out there during this time, right? Golf just kind of started back up. Some of the other guys were, you know, kind of focusing on other things. And uh, I had a couple buddies that said, hey, help me out. I want to get into... Uh, doing some fantasy golf on DraftKings and have no clue how to start. So I created a video for them. They checked it out and that kind of started it. And then there was a couple followers that also checked out the kind of how-to video and that was it. And uh, Golf Guru was born. So just a little bit of history if you didn't know. Um, but what is the giveaway? That's why you are listening. And in short, I'm going to give away out of my own money, a thousand dollars randomly to one per one subscriber. And all you need to do to get in this is subscribe and of course like this video and hopefully more to come and just tell me who you think is ultimately going to be the fedex cup winner so as you see over there to the right dj won last year of course this is three events that keeps narrowing the field down and there'll be one champion that is going to take home a lot of cash and so hey for my user community i thought it'd be nice for you guys to take home some cash too all you need to do again to enter is subscribe like share and of course, tell me in the YouTube comments below who you think is going to win the FedEx Cup playoffs. And please just do one entry. It just makes it easier. I mean, I go through because I put all this into a random generator and it's going to give me one name. But of course, you have to be subscribed and you have to like a share. And of course, the 1,000 also is uh, tied to, of course, I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. We're around 750. The community keeps growing. It keeps getting better. A lot of people that belong to this community are very smart also and share a lot of insights with me which i share with you guys so hey it's a great place to be and excited for the the years to come so that's it on the giveaway let's go jump over to fantasy national i'm going to go over the guys that i like in the 6000 range for you and then we'll get into ownership projections and all that okay so jumping over to fantasy national of course uh i always kind of state this is where i do all my research great tool highly recommend it and uh, what I'm looking at is the guys, of course, in the 6,000 range. And I gave you guys 10 picks, and a couple of these guys were already in here. So I'm not going to go over Sam Burns and Lee Westwood. I just wanted to note out, if you did not see my picks and bet show, these were my two first guys. Go check out the show I put out yesterday. I dive into detail on these guys, why I like them so much that I put them in my top 10. And then I'm, I've got uh, four other guys at this range that I'm going to cover that I like. And just so you know, I am filtering on this one. I wanted to kind of do a little something different for me and for you. Uh, I've put on Bermuda greens and also courses that are 7,200 yards or less just to get a little better understanding how these guys handle because, you know, sometimes guys play what better on certain kind of courses. And these are the four guys that I think could do very well here, and I'll talk about why. So the first guy we're going to talk about is Ryan Palmer, right? He's had really good history um, that we've seen this year, really kind of turned his career around over the last year and a half. I love playing him on showdown. He has a really can get very hot and put that three birdies together when he's got the putter going. Uh, so just from a point perspective, I think at 6,500, it's a great value. You can already see projected ownership is at 9.2. And again, everything I'm talking about, just so you know, is coming off uh, DraftKings pricing. Uh, usually all my shows, that's what it's focused on. And uh, you can see this is the mini model that I liked. And we got approach, ball striking, good drives. The proximity of 150 to 175, of course, I mentioned 25% of the approach shots are coming from that range. Putting is going to be key as it always is. You got birdies gained over here on the right. This is looking over the last 12 rounds. 
and uh, then some recent results. And you can see, you know, Ryan has uh, missed a cut at some of the more tougher kind of events. Um, but we all know that he had a really good run, especially in Texas. And I'll go into that. And then his past history. Again, we just want to look at 2020 or 2019. Um, this would be, of course, Firestone, but this is TPC Southwind, and he had a T15 uh, last year. All right, let's go jump on Ryan, take a look at why I'm pumping him up. All right, so you see the first thing, over the life of the career for Ryan Palmer, Bermuda is his best putting surface. Now, it's not a very strong kind of like stroke gain that he has against the field over his life, but typically where I've seen him do very well is putting on the Bermuda Greens, if we go look at stroke gain approach, we can see he still has had a, he had a little bit of drop off here, hence probably the recent kind of miscuts, but you know, was on a nice trend on his approach. Okay, so let's look at Ryan as some of his uh, positioning, where he's done the best over his career, what certain venues. And so the number one right off the bat would be uh, the Sony, and uh, that should be at YLA. Let me just verify. Yep, I didn't know if it went far that far back. But as one of the comp courses, if you watched again the previews and pick show, um, and even, you know, all that you just saw the different comp courses that I'm leveraging for this tournament. Uh, he's done well at the Honda, which was another one of mine, uh, at the tournament of champions recently, uh, to start the kind of the year off technically, um, that is a, a bigger course, but it is Bermuda greens. Uh, again, the Sony, the Honda, just kind of scrolling through here. That's older St. Jude. So that's no good. All right, let's go through and specifically look at. Some of his data against it. So one of the courses off the bat was RBC Heritage. Again, I think it's a good comparable course. You know, he's done well there. An eighth, eleventh, um, and let me go by date. So we have the most recent. So there we go. Um, so you know, a good showing here again recently at the RBC. Let's go take a look. The other one was Valspar at Innisbrook. I had a sixty-third. So you know, not the greatest, but made the cut. Best showing was a 28th. Let's check out the Honda. We looked at some of these. He's had a second there, PGA National, a fourth, a 17th. A good comparable course, a lot of water, Bermuda. And uh, what was another one? I think the players we were looking at. Had a 17th just recently at TPC Sawgrass. Again, tough course, Bermuda. Uh, I think that's a par off the top of my head, par 72. A uh, little longer, but the water, the Bermuda greens, I think this applicable from that side. Had a miscut in 2019, a 23rd, a 23rd, a 5th way back in 2013. So again, could get around TPC Sawgrass. What about Wyndham? Only played there once, had a miscut in 2017. The RSM Classic doesn't play the RSM, which quite a few of these guys are probably not. And then we pulled up the Sony where we know he had some good showings. He had a 4th. Uh, a while back, a 13th, a 10th, so likes to play over in Hawaii, which makes sense. And I mentioned he won there way back in 2010. So again, I think he could, you know, from a point perspective and the value at that price, I like Ryan Palmer. If you're, you know, building lineups where you're trying to get a little top heavy, again, could be someone to look at. All right, the next guy, Kevin Na, which um, typically I don't get Kevin Na correct. Uh, usually if I play him, he miscuts. cuts. Or he withdraws, and if I don't play him, he goes nuts. Um, but we look at his tournament history here. He did play the last two years, a 35th, a 43rd. And, uh, you know, had that real good showing at the John Deere recently, so I like that. Again, the putter on most of these guys is what I've been go leaning on when we get down in this area. Now, you can see Ryan Palmer is not, you know, he's he's got a streaky putter. But we all know Kevin Na. Even though this year his putting has not been that great, Um but, you know, you can see over his last, I believe this is 24, 12 rounds. Over his last 12 rounds on Bermuda specifically, you got to remember that, uh, he ranks 14th out of the field of 60. You know, can also get streaky high. You can see here recently, been making some birdies. Let's go click on Kevin Na. And you can see, you know, good putter usually over his life of his career. Bermuda would be his second best surface. You know, not too much off from bent. And if we go look at just stroke gain approach, the other key area that we want to focus on, you know, you can see a little bit of a downturn for him, um, which has probably been some of these results that we see. And let's go put in some of the tournaments that I like from a comparable side. So we look at RBC, he had a miscut this year, but a 10th prior, a fourth. So it makes sense, you know, when you think of Kevin Ah, 
where he could strike, I've said this before, is shorter courses uh, where he can leverage, you know, his around the green game, his putter. Um, you know, he's okay, as you see, over his career off the tee, as in just, you know, hitting his 280, trying to keep it in play. It's really if the approach is on, that's where he'll strike with the, the short game. Uh, let's look at Valspar. Again, he's done well, you know, and that's a little tougher uh, course, you know, to manage, I would think, uh, than this one. But, you know, has navigated that course pretty decent 29th recently. What about the Honda? You know, a couple missed cuts again, probably a little tougher track. But, you know, hey, if these guys have had some success there. Now, I don't like to see this, but this is a while ago, all this. So we're not going to really put a whole lot of stock at the Honda tournament. It looks like he just kind of gave up on that one. The Tour Championship last time he was there was in 2020. Ended up with a 27th. So that's bottom of the field, right? There's 30 guys uh, that finally make it to that. But he, he made it. So that's pretty good. Of course, the players, you know, I talked about already his blow up on hole 17 this year that, you know, and of course I had him rostered, probably even picked him. Uh, but you can see he's had some good experience at TPC Sawgrass. You know, nothing really recently to write home about. And then the RSM played once way back, miscut. But the Sony was also kind of what got me thinking about. So that's what he won this year. Um, again, Wailea, I think it's a, it's a good comparable course. You can see he's had some success there, a fourth, fifth. You know, that's a while back, but at eighth in 2014. Um, so that was what even kind of pointed me in Nas direction. When I started thinking about comparable courses, of course, when I came across Wailea as a good match, I'm like, you know, there you go. Funny enough, you can see Siwoo Kim uh, ranks very high in my model, and that's the bigger model that I did. But you can see even on this like, mini model from a ball striking approach, I mean, also a good bet. I don't know what his odds are off the top of my head. I don't feel like it's great. I feel it was like 55 to 1 or something like that. Um, but, of course, he's had, you know, uh, one at the players at TPC Sawgrass. He won the Amex recently. We'll get into that. Um, a, another course that has got some comparability to it. There's two courses they rotate through. The stadium course is the one that has Bermuda grass. So, you know, again, maybe a bit of a stretch. But um, let's go click on Siwoo. We already know that his putter is suspect. Um, you know, you can see Bermuda's his worst surface, but again, that's 0.2 strokes loss against the field over the life of his career. So it's nothing major. It's not a half stroke or a full stroke by any stretch. Um, if we go to his approach game, you can see still trending on the way up. So, you know, maybe a little dip here, there, but pretty solid. If you want to look at it a different way, you can see here what he's been doing well over his last five tournaments, 10 tournaments. Of course, it's the putter. If he has a good putter. And actually, let's just click that just for fun. I didn't do this, but so his best putting round ever was at Shriners, which I believe that is, that's been TPC Summerlin. Let's do that again. Let me take one more look. And that would be a Firestone, so we can't really count that. Okay, let's just uh, take a minute and let's, uh, let's go bang him against some of the comparable courses. So at RBC, recently at a 33, but also at a second back there in 2018. So, you know, you can kind of give that a B rating, I guess. The Valspar played here in 2018 at a 59th. What about the Honda miscut in 2020? So a couple of miscuts. So you, not a big fan of PGA National. What about the Tour Championship? Only made it there once, and that was in 2016 where he had a 10th. So that, again, is East Lake. What about the players? So, again, good showing here. You know, won it back in 2017. Had that ninth place uh, here in uh, just recently March time frame. What about the Wyndham? So, again, this was another thing. Won it in 2016. Another good comp course. Par 70. Shorter course. Bermuda. Um, you know, good showings at the Wyndham. What about the RSM? That's funny. Doesn't like Sea Island. A um, bunch of miscuts at an 18th there once. So that's, you know, that's, you know, if you know Siwoo Kim, you know he's very volatile. Um, and then uh, lastly, uh, the Sony, where he had a fourth way back in 2016 and a 25th recently. So again, um, you know, someone that at that price range, 6,400, you can see projected ownership is pretty low. It will go verify that. Sometimes the numbers that come in here uh, do not represent when I go into the actual ownership projection. My last guy is the Australian Matty Jones, right? And, of course, again, just 
off the top of my head, uh, thinking of who won the Honda recently, you know, he uh, really from, you know, I don't know, I guess he won that wire to wire. I believe he came out the first day and just shot that ridiculous, like 61 or 63 or whatever it was. And then it was a very windy conditions. Um, but this got my interest here over his last 12 rounds on Bermuda. You know, his putting went way up. If I turn that filter off, you'd see that, you know, some of these guys don't have that good of a rating. But with the Bermuda greens on, and that's kind of how I wanted to kind of filter it for me. You can see ownership projections also low. We'll verify that. He's at 6,200, so this is the lowest I would go. Um, you know, you can see he's kind of had a mixed bag of re recent results. And he's played here at least at TPC Summerlin uh, last year, and he had a T59. So, you know, nothing great there. Of course, that's out of, uh, I would guess, about out of the field of 60. So almost dead last. But you can see Bermuda over life his career is his best putting surface. You can see here where he definitely gains. And I kind of looked at the weather. We'll go into that. But, uh, you know, it doesn't look like there's going to be much wind maybe on Sunday. Um, strokes gain approach. You can kind of see he had a fall off. You can see that represented here. So it must be if we go and let's just go right now to the Honda. Yeah. So this was the big difference why he won um, was he gained six strokes on on the approach. And on that note, why don't we just go look at some of the courses that he's done well with the approach. So funny enough, the St. Jude, but that's not, you know, that's a St. Jude Invitational. And you can see at the Honda at PGA National a couple of times, he's actually, for whatever reason, likes to hit his approach shots there. He's done well at the Sony, um, which this was recent. So that's another good comp course. Just kind of scrolling through where he's done well. The Wyndham, that's a while back, but still. Uh, you can even use the Amex. I think there is some applicability there. All right, let's go through it the other way and filter by actual tournaments. And let me switch this so we can see most recent. So the most recent, RBC, this is uh, back in 2020. Uh, he had a 52nd and a 30th way back. So nothing really there to gleam onto. Let's see Valspar. 2019, he played there once, had a 13th showing, so that's pretty solid. It's surprised he didn't go back. Of course, the Honda we just talked about um, had some good showings there. And then I doubt he's ever made the Tour Championship. That is correct. What about the players? Had a 17th way back in 2014 at 50, you know, made the cut at least this year. There's a lot of guys that are, you know, bigger names, better talent that didn't, you know, did not make the cut. Uh, what about the Wyndham? Showed you his fifth way back in 2013, but then a bunch of missed cuts and then a 37th. You can see again, if he, you know, hits on his approach, it's just all about the irons with him. And, uh, what about the RSM? I think he, yeah, I was going to say, he seems like he played the RSM. You know, nothing great, a 44th, a 51st, a couple missed cuts. And last but not least, the Sony which uh, he had an 11th here recently. You can see the approach was working out for him. Also made, you know, did well with the putter on Bermuda. Um, played the Sony quite a bit at Wild Air. You know, it's had some decent results. So, again, someone maybe to think about. And also it gets a little windy there, right, off the ocean. So, you know, keep that in the back of your mind or take a note that uh, you might want to look at Matty Jones uh, when uh, the turn of the year comes around. I think, I think that Hawaii swing happens, you know, sometime right after Christmas if I, you know, well, let's just look. It'll tell me right here. So, yeah, right at kick off the new year uh, pretty much is when that event is always taking place. Okay, that's it for my value plays. I hope that helps when you guys get down there. Um, you know, can be able to differentiate yourselves. Also, let you build a little bigger lineups. I mean, the pricing is pretty soft. You can build some really nice teams when you get into these kind of, uh, you know, no-cut events, smaller fields. Uh, but, you know, if you're trying to put two or three of those top guys together, you're going to end up down in the 6,000 range, uh, at least for one of your guys. All right, let's talk about ownership projections. Uh, as mentioned, I've got it figured out now that if we just click over here, I can give you guys, we can kind of go from highest owned down. Um, you can see quite a few people have generated lineups, and so this should be a pretty accurate number. And I always state it's usually within one or two percentage points when it actually locks in DraftKings. Um, and this is the number we want to look at over here. So just kind of going through it off the top. I think we talked about this, you know, number one owned versus Kepka. You got Berger next, which, you know, all that makes total sense. You got Spieth, 
got English, you got Louis. Just kind of give you guys a view. You know, that's that's interesting to me, Kokrak. Uh, maybe people are tuning into my show and, uh, you know, can kind of pick out that uh, he does play smaller courses better. Um, let's see here. Anything else that kind of sticks out to me? You know, Morikawa is down a little bit. You got Sammy Burns, man. At 16%, that's crazy. I would have never guessed uh, that he'd have that kind of ownership. Again, people are getting smart. Um, let's go down and reverse this. I just want to see who the least. You know, Strep could actually be an interesting... I actually plugged him in one of my GPP lineups. Um, again, when I think of small courses, Robert Streb can manage and get around. So if he's at that kind of ownership, it might be a, a differentiation. I still like the, the Lee Westwood play. Kind of shocked that he's that low owned. Um, but, you know, this is one of those things where what have you done for me lately? And, you know, I talked about the Florida swing with him and how well he did on Bermuda. And, of course, you know, he had two great showings. That, you know, one was at the Players, one was at Honda, I believe, or no, API. Um, and so... You know, for 6,600, I already discussed him. Like I said, if you want to go into a deeper analytics about Lee West, what I did that yesterday on my pick show. Uh, Minwoo Lee, who won, what was it, the Scottish or the Irish? I get him mixed up. Um, you know, he's got a win recently. Couldn't be that terrible. You know, Lucas Herbert for a while there was the hot commodity. He was playing really well. So, again, I'm just giving you guys some ideas if you're thinking about playing down here. The old Leishman getting no love. Didn't have that great of a showing at the Olympics. Funny, I kept trying to run him out there in showdown, and he was not producing until Sunday. He had a good Sunday at the Olympics. Uh, Marty Laird, you know, he, uh, what did he win? Shriners, I believe. Uh, I might be wrong, but just going off the top of my head. Um, you know, it could be somebody else to look at. You know, Garrick Hago's kind of falling out of love a little bit. I, this course for me and Garrick Hago, he just, he gets a little, he's got distance, but he's wayward with the driver, so no thank you. So, yeah, so, you know, Matt Jones is less than 4% owned. You got Siwa at less 4% 4 owned. Just trying to see if anybody else sticks out that might be uh, an interesting play. You know, this is an interesting fee now. Usually, no matter what, and I'll be curious when this all comes in, uh, just, you know, people that might randomly play DraftKings or F Fantasy, uh, you know, usually fee now's ownership's up higher. Um, people like to play them, but maybe people are starting to get smart. Of course, Cameron Champ coming off the recent win at the 3M. There's Kevin Na. You know, Kevin Kisner could be an interesting play. I mean, you know, it's almost at 9%. But again, uh, I talked about Austin, Texas, where they played the Dell match play yesterday. Um, I think, you know, that course could be applicable, hence why the the Billy Horschel kind of thoughts on mine. You know, you see Billy Horschel up 10, almost at 10%. My Ryan Palmer's at 10%. So, um, some people are getting some Ryan Palmer love. I think Max Homa, I think he's got pretty good odds from a betting perspective. And I've always said this, you know, Max seems like either he comes close to winning a tournament or win a tournament or he misses the cut. Now, he can't miss the cut here. So that could be an interesting play from a betting perspective. I don't know, if I want, you know, I didn't pick Max to be in uh, up in, the, you know, my top 10 picks. Okay. I think it gives you guys a good understanding just so you can see where ownership is coming in right now. So, you know, adjust accordingly or, you know, stick with what you got. Terrell Hatton, that's no shocker either. You know, I talked about that. I think it was one of my first discussion points was I was shocked to see T-Hat at 7,400. I think that's one of the better values um, that you got out there. Now, again, it's all about the mental game. If he plays well and he's in the tournament and he's not getting frustrated, you know, you, you can be good to go. If he gets frustrated out of the bat, it's going to be it's going to be a long weekend with Terrell Hatton. Okay, last but not least, let's just talk about weather real fast. Um, again, if you're using WindFinder, and you should use WindFinder, um, where are you going to want to pull up at the Olive Branch Airport? That is the closest uh, location to where the course is uh, for TPC Southwind. And really nothing to report that I'm seeing. Of course, I'm recording this uh, Wednesday afternoon. So, you know, we still got a little bit of time. But uh, it just looks like it's going to be hot and muggy and very little wind. Uh, I don't see any rain yet in the forecast and nothing really to report. So there's no AM, PM worries right now. Of course, you know, check it, especially I'm sure most of you play Showdown. You do keep an eye on it. And then really Sunday is the only time that it looks like a little wind. 
is going to be blowing in the afternoon. Um, so that's it. That's your friendly weather report. And again, I always tell you, the only reason why I really do this for you guys is so you can just save the time and know, hey, just go punch in Olive Branch. That's the closest location to the airport. Okay, let's uh, wrap this thing up. Okay, so again, to summarize, uh, and that actually should be my top six value plays. Maybe I forgot to add one. Um, but we got Ryan Palmer, big fan. I think uh, can get very streaky from a point perspective. You got four days out of him. Um, also, even at, I believe it was, and again, I, I keep forgetting, but it was a Scottish was the last one. Um, he had a good showing there, and I you know, didn't even look to pull that up. But uh, you can go look and see what his placement. I, at least I know from a couple, he had a couple really hot days there. So there's some more recent form than probably you know of. Of course, Siwoo Kim holding the player's trophy there. Um, you know, just fits this kind of track. It's just going to come down to the putter. Kevin Nah, you know, again, this is my uh, kryptonite pick, if I had to put it. I never get them right. So do with that what you want. But again, everything tells me that Kevin Nah could strike here. And he only has a handful of tournaments that he really has a chance to win. This, I think, is one of them. Uh, Lee Westwood, again, going off the Florida form. He's had a nice little break. Hopefully uh, he's ready to uh, also have a good showing. And last but not least, you know, Sammy Burns, of course, won the Valspar and, um, you know, was just running hot there for a bit. Had a first place and they get a second at the, the Charles Schwab or is that the Byron Nelson? Might have been the Nelson. Neither here or there. But then it's kind of fallen a little bit off. But again, you know, LSU guy, you know, used to the hot weather. This is kind of where he could strike. He's you know usually very accurate tee to green and very, you know, great putters. Chipping is probably, you know, a little less than desired, but other than that, pretty good. So that's it. And then uh, who else did I pick? I don't have on here because I know I had six guys for you. Oh, Matty Jones. Sorry, I for some reason did not add him on here. But Matty Jones, again, went, won the Honda recently. Uh, can can get hot with the putter on Bermuda, you saw. And, uh, you know, at bare, almost bare min price could be uh, someone if you're way down there, you might want to plug in. All right, that's it. Thank you again for attending. Don't forget, if you're watching this, if you have not subscribed, subscribe. Get your name into that $1,000 winner entry. Again, I'm only picking one person, uh, but it's going to be one out of about, you know, by that time, hopefully I'm at 1,000 subscribers. So, yeah, it's not great odds, but it's not terrible odds. And all, simply all you got to do is click the like button on this video, hit the subscribe button, and uh, just tell me down in the YouTube comments who you think is going to win the FedEx playoffs, and you will be entered into the contest. So thanks, you guys, so much. Hey, have a great weekend. Uh, hope, uh, hope, or, you know, if you're, I believe uh, for Barracuda, um, I didn't even put this in there, but I, my thoughts, and I haven't bet on it yet, uh, Stefan Jaeger, um, who's been just lighting up the Corn Ferry Tour, uh, I, I like. So if you're somehow playing that, but from a betting perspective, I think he's like 50 to 1. So I'll just throw that out for you guys too. All right, you guys, take care. Have a great weekend. Talk to you later.